If you'll please stand, I want you to take the Word of God and turn with me to the Old Testament, to the book of Psalms, Psalm 46. Psalm 46, verse 10. I believe we'll be camped out here today, uh, this morning, tonight, back here at Psalm 46. Verse 10. Be still and know that I am God. I'll be exalted among the heathen. I'll be exalted in the earth. We've been looking at that phrase, be still and know that I am God. And we've made reference to this and said that this stillness, according to the Bible here, is to know the Lord and not just experience Him once in a while um, and being still, but this becomes a way of life for us, um, not just an experience again, but a way of life that we experience over and over again as we are still in His presence. And we've been trying to talk about what does this stillness look like in our lives. And so we want to continue to try to look at that today and ask the Lord's help. Father, Thank you for your word, and we ask that as we open your word and we look in it today, that we would see exactly what you're thinking, and that our minds would be turned the same direction as you are thinking, and we would think the same way, and uh, we would understand the same way. Uh, Lord, you can help us by your Holy Spirit today. We know that, and so we're asking you to do that. And Father, if there's one here that's not saved today, they don't know your son as their savior. Lord, may today be the day that they quit thinking the way they're thinking and start thinking the way you think about their sin and about their salvation and that you've given your son to pay all their debt. And Father, would they come to you? Would we all come to you, Lord? Would we give great liberty for salvation today and great liberty for sanctification and just yielding to you our lives because you're worthy. You're worthy to be exalted in the earth exalted by our lives, and we ask this in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. We talked about what this looks like in this stillness in our life. We're just trying to make some application to some specific areas in our life, and we talked about praying and how we ought to pray in this stillness. Uh, it's not just that we pray, but we pray and we still before God. When we handle the Word of God, and you should be handling the Word of God in your own personal time, in your own personal life, you should be indulging in it, but not just that, but in stillness, being still with God, letting God speak to you through it and guiding you in it. We talked about soul winning in this stillness, and we talked about how that you can go and tell people about Jesus, but when you go tell people about Jesus and you're still with the Lord as you go tell them, there's a difference. And it's not really about our ability, it's about our availability. Just being available to be like John the Baptist, a voice crying in the wilderness to be used of the Lord. Then we talked about last time about worshiping in this stillness and how it's, it has to be a spirit worship and not a soul worship. It's not an emotional, stirring worship, although there are times that we get greatly emotionally stirred. But it all comes from yielding to God in the spirit. He's made us an emotional being, but we should never get the facts behind the emotions. We should always have the facts first and the truth from the word of God that stirs our emotions and leads us into doing what he wants us to do in our life. And all, everything we do comes out of our worship of God. And today I want to talk about we need to think about eternity in this stillness. We need to think about eternity in this stillness. I think this will greatly help us. There are two real worlds. The one in which we live, which obviously we know is very real. We deal with things every day. And then the one in which is beyond this world in which we will live. And that's called eternity. Every man's an eternal being. Meaning that everyone will live somewhere for all eternity. Everybody is an eternal being. As revealed to us in the Word of God, there's only two places that a person can spend all of eternity in. Either heaven 
or hell and eventually the lake of fire. These are only two places that you will end up for all of eternity. I want you to go with me and see some, just some passage of scripture here about heaven. In John chapter 14, beginning in verse 1, Jesus was speaking here and is telling his disciples, he said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Now, I want you to know this is not on earth. This is in eternity at its Father's house. This would be what we would refer to as heaven, being with the Lord. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again. I love the promise. And receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know. And the way you know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest. And how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You see, it's talking about heaven. Talking about being with the Lord and being with Jesus where the Father's at. In uh, for 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, beginning in verse 1. For we know, and I love those statements in the Bible, things that we can know. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, that means this earthly house is our bodies, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. So we have a house that we're going to be in, a new body that's in the heavens. For every believer, he's writing to believers here in the Corinthian church. He says, for in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. Meaning we're groaning in this body right now that we're in. He says, if so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now he that hath wrought us for the selfsame thing is God, who also hath given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent. From the Lord. As long as we're here in this time, we are not with God in heaven and clothed upon with our heavenly body. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body. That's the tabernacle that he was talking about. That's the housing that we have now. And to be present with the Lord. Being with him in eternity, in heaven. There's another place called hell. And then there's another place, the lake of fire. I believe these are two, there's two separate places. The Bible says in Luke, and we're going to camp out in Luke here for a little, bo- little while. I want you to turn to Luke chapter 16. Luke chapter 16. And we just want to read through this account here, beginning in verse 19 of Luke chapter 16. We're we're wanting to think about eternity. And you want to think about eternity in the stillness of God's ruling presence to let him help you. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate, full of sores, and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water, 
and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember thou, or that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, between us and you there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham saith unto him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. The Bible gives you phrases here in this passage of Scripture, which is, a, I believe, an actual account, not just a parable. And it gives you phrases like this in verse 23. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments. Verse 24, I am tormented in this flame. Verse 25, thou art tormented. Verse 28, this place of torment. Referring to hell. Unless you be confused, this Abraham's bosom was part of the whole of hell, but it was not the part that people were being tormented in, that the Old Testament saints were in, which no longer, to our understanding of the Bible, exist anymore. Now, people don't go to Abraham's bosom or what was called paradise when Jesus was on the cross. It's now people go directly to be with the Lord if they're a believer or go directly to be in the same place, hell, as of right now. But the Bible also says in Revelation chapter 20, verse 14 and 15, And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So it appears that hell, that is holding people right now and the souls of people will one day be cast into something worse than hell, the lake of fire. We want to talk about death. When you talk about death, we're talking about separation. That's what the word death means, separation. And there are two types of death. When we talk about death, we can talk about physical death or we can talk about spiritual death. Physical death sends our spirit and soul into eternity because they are separated from the body. And in 1 Thessalonians 5.23, the Bible says we have a spirit, a soul, and a body. And when our body is separated, then our spirit and our soul go out into eternity. And when a person dies, if they have never received Jesus Christ as their personal Savior by faith, then they will experience spiritual death. And when a person dies spiritually, their spirit and soul are then separated from the Lord's merciful presence for all of eternity in this place of torment called hell, and then eventually the lake of fire. Separation and separation. There is a second death that comes to every man who rejects Jesus Christ as their Savior. Not only a physical separation of the body from the soul and the spirit, but then a separation of the soul and the spirit from God in that condition without Christ. So I want to talk about this place of torment today because we need to be thinking about eternity. Now, I don't like to think about hell. I'm not going there. And it's not because I'm so good. It's because I was so bad that Jesus died for me and I believed on him and he saved me. And because of his righteousness, I'm going to be able to walk into heaven on his merits. And I think about heaven. I think about being with the Lord. But thinking about hell will help, will help me and you help you to think about others who are not on their way to heaven. And so I want you to see the proof of this place of torment that's given to us in scriptures. And I want you to know that the word of God is the only source of information concerning hell. I wouldn't, I wouldn't give you 
a half of a penny for the testimonies on YouTube about people who died and went to hell and come back and they haven't told one person about Jesus Christ and seen them saved since then. I wouldn't give you a half a penny for them. I wouldn't believe a word they said either. I wouldn't believe a word of the people who said they went to heaven either. If you went to hell or you went to heaven and you come back, you're going to be a soul winner. And we should be soul winners anyway because we know what's happened inside of us and what the Lord's doing in us. Matthew chapter 25. By the way, what I'm saying is everything we believe, no matter if it's about heaven or hell or anything, needs to come from the Bible. And that's where you can place your faith, not in men. Matthew chapter 25, verse 41 the Bible makes this statement as Jesus was speaking. He said, Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Verse 46 says, And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. And of course we saw in Luke chapter 16 as we read, what it said about hell. And in Revelation chapter 20, we saw some things about hell. But in, in verse 10 of Revelation chapter 20, the Bible says this, And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Back up to Revelation 19, 20. The Bible says here, and the beast was taken, and with the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with, with which he deceived them, and that had, re, had received them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. You know, there's, there's, a, <clears throat> there's a real place called hell prepared for the devil and the fallen angels. The Lord did not design hell for you and me. You know what he designed for us? Calvary. It's amazing. For the devil and the fallen angels that, that disobeyed him, there's a hell. But he sent his son to Calvary for you and me. And if we're going to go to hell, which I'm not, but speaking in general as people, if people are going to go to hell, they have to go right by the cross to get there. Because the Lord doesn't want anybody to go there. It's a real place. There's nothing pleasant about this place. There's nothing kind about this place. It is a place of torment. It's a place of unending darkness, forever falling and forever dying, but never being able to die. It's a place where no friends and family will be known, no smiles will ever be given. No sweet fragrance ever smelled. It's a place where no kindness is ever spoken. It's a horrible place, but it's a place. Just like Wetumpka's a place here in Alabama. There's a real place called hell. And the devil wants us to get in a hurry and, and not think about this place of torment called hell. So I ask, can we be still and think about eternity in the ruling presence of the Lord. And if we can stop and think about eternity and let the Lord help us with eternity, thinking about it, then hell and the lake of fire would be a reality to us. And therefore, it would be a reality to those that are around us in our life. So there's proof from the Word of God that there's a place called hell and there's a place called the lake of fire that really exists. But people go to this place of torment. It's not enough for us to know that it exists, but people go there. When I read in the Word of God that the devil and his fallen angels will be cast in this place of torment, which we read in Revelation 19 and Revelation chapter 20, I think this is right because they belong there and this is what they deserve. But it is hard to imagine any person going to this place of torment. But I know that they do, though Jesus doesn't want them to go there. In 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 9, it says that Jesus was not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. He's not willing that any go there. That's not his will at all. 
despite what the hyper-Calvinists will say and that some are foreordained to go to hell. He's not willing. That's why he's long-suffering. That's why he hasn't come back already. Because he doesn't want anybody to go there. The rich man and Lazarus, they were real people in, in Luke chapter 16 that we read about. The rich man, he really had five brothers that he talked about when he lifted up his eyes in hell. He said, I got five brothers. Go and let them know. The rich man really did go to hell, and he was really in hell in Luke chapter 16, and the rich man was really afraid that his brothers would join him if somebody didn't tell them the truth. And there are people in hell today that the only answer to their prayer is you or me. And they're saying, Lord, send somebody to my family so they don't come here where I'm at. Right now, there's people crying out. See, there are real people that we see every day that are on, that are on their way to a real hell. And we have to realize that if we don't hear, if they don't hear the truth and receive Jesus as their Savior, they're going to spend all eternity in this place of torment. It is estimated that almost 57 million people have already died this year around the world. I can't even gather that number. I mean, it's not a number that's a working number in my head to imagine that many people. But there's a lot of people on this earth. And guess what? A majority of those people have gone into a Christless eternity, which means they went into hell. Because those people were in a place where they never heard the gospel. Some of those people were here in Alabama, but they never got the gospel to them. Some of those people heard the gospel and they rejected the good news of Jesus Christ and his death, burial, and resurrection. And the devil wants you and me to get in a hurry and to not think about people so that we don't think about their souls. The question is, is can we just be still in the ruling presence of the Lord and think about people that will live for eternity? And if we can think about people that will live for eternity, we start thinking in their mind, there's an end to these people. And when their life ends, where are they going to spend eternity at? And then that's a question that we have to ask them. But if we're not concerned about them, because we're not concerned about hell, because we're not going there, then we're not going to ask them. But there's also provision that has been made to escape this place of torment in order to go to heaven. I'm thankful for the provision. In Luke chapter 19 and verse 10, Jesus said this, For the Son of Man, referring to himself, is come to seek and to save that which was lost. This summarizes Jesus' ministry here on this earth. He come to seek and to save that which was lost. Romans 3 and verse 10 says, As it is written, there is none righteous. No, not one. Most people in the world look at people as either good people or bad people. And there might have been a time in your life where you've just looked at people and you said, that's a good person, that's a bad person. So they make statements like this, and if you've heard it, I'm sure. If I've heard it, you've heard it. God would not send a good man to hell. Because that's, what they, that's the way the world looks at it. This is a good person, this is a bad person. God would send Hitler to hell, but he wouldn't send somebody who's done a lot of good things in their life but they've rejected Jesus Christ. He wouldn't send them to hell. But the Lord doesn't see good people and bad people. He sees righteous people and unrighteous people. And the Lord sees all men without Christ as unrighteous people, and they're already on their way to hell. There's nothing that a person has to do to get on their way to hell. They are already going there, and they're unrighteous. Without Christ, then we are spiritually dead. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 1, the Bible says this, referring to what Paul said to the Ephesian believers. He said, and you hath he quickened. He, referring back to the Lord that he was talking about at the end of chapter 1, hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. Because of their trespasses and sins against God, they were dead spiritually, and God has raised them up. And we have to be born again spiritually into God's family in order to have eternal life and not eternal death. Because that's what 
hell is and the lake of fire. Eternal death, but never dying. But dying, but never dying. Being in torments and wanting to die, but you can't die. And that is why God the Father sent Jesus, his son, to die for our sins. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He did that so we would not have to perish. Perishing is a picture of going to hell and eventually being cast in the lake of fire. But we won't ever perish, but we will be perishing. But his son was given so that we could have everlasting life and we wouldn't have to perish. For every man he was given. The Lord made a way for us to be righteous by having the righteousness of Jesus Christ being put upon our account. In 2 Corinthians 5.21, For he hath made him, that's God the Father making the Son, to be sin for us, substitute, who knew no sin. Jesus didn't know any sin, but he was made to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Anybody who would receive the Son can have his righteousness. We don't deserve it. We're given the righteousness of God because he gave himself for us. And if we have the righteousness of Jesus Christ, then the Bible tells us that we're no longer condemned and we have eternal life. In John chapter 3, the Bible says in verse 18, He that believeth on him, talking about Jesus, is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. There's no condemnation in Christ, because we have his righteousness. We cannot be condemned for being righteous. Verse 36 says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. If we have the Son, we have everlasting life. We have his righteousness. And the only reason that anybody will escape the horrible torment of hell is because of what the Lord Jesus Christ did for us on the cross. If you're a believer today, there was a day that you escaped the terrible torment of hell. There's a day when somebody told you the gospel of Jesus Christ. You should be able to think about it right now in your minds. What was that day? As someone gave you the gospel and told you that Jesus died, lived a sinless life. He went to the cross, not for any sin that he did, but went to the cross and paid for your sin and was made sin for you on the cross. And he died your death. And he raised up from the grave victorious over death, hell, and the grave as an accepted and proven sacrifice for God the Father because his justice required the price to be paid. And Jesus paid it for you. And when you heard that, you realized as a sinner that you don't deserve it, but you wanted Jesus Christ to be your Savior. And you wanted the forgiveness that he offered you and you believed on Jesus Christ as your Savior. And the Bible says if you have the Son, then you have eternal life. And you can know that you have eternal life in 1 John 5, 13. If you believed on Him. That day for me was January 27th of 2000. When Jesus made me spiritually alive, He took the blinders off And I realized that he was a savior and that I was a sinner and I needed him. And I called on him that night to save me. He gave me his righteousness. He made me spiritually alive. And he's been working on me ever since. But that was the night. At 8.01, if I would have died on that Thursday night, January 27th of 2000, in my mother's living room, At 222 Lotus Lane, I would have have gotten out of this tabernacle and I would have gotten my heavenly tabernacle and I would have been with the Lord. Let's just say at 745, if I would have died that night, I left this tabernacle. I'd been in a place of torment. Just 
few minutes difference. But Jesus made the difference. And I thought I was a good person. And I thought I was a believer. Well, I thought I was a Christian. And I wasn't. Never believed on Christ. There's other people who are deceived and they think they're believers. But they've never trusted Christ as their Savior. And one day he's going to have to say to them, I never knew you. Depart from me. He didn't say, I knew you, and then I didn't know you. He said, I never knew you. And there's going to be a place of torment. Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. And verse 13 and following. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. You know how it works. If someone doesn't come to you and preach the gospel, if you don't hear the gospel somehow, if somebody's not preaching it, and you, you can't hear it, and if you don't hear it, you can't believe it, and if you don't believe it, you can't call on the Lord to save you. But the promise is, whosoever calleth on the name of the Lord shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So we should ask the Lord to help us to be a faithful witness because the end of every Christless life is a Christless eternity and that Christless eternity is a place of torment called hell and eventually the lake of fire. And we have the provision to help others escape hell and to go to heaven. May the Lord help us. We have the provision. The devil wants to get us in a hurry so we will not think about the provision that Jesus made so that we do not desire to tell others about the provision. Can we be still and think about the provision that Jesus made by his death, burial, and resurrection? Can we just be still and think about it? And then think about it in his ruling presence. And then the Lord's provision would be a reality to us. The place of torment would be a reality. The end of every person without Jesus Christ would be a reality. But his provision would also be a reality. Because we're not, we're not hopeless and other people aren't hopeless. They're only hopeless if they don't get the gospel. And we have the power of God in salvation. We have the power of God in us through the Holy Spirit, but we have the power of God through the gospel for other people to hear. And we must be thinking about eternity and the ruling presence of the Lord. And that means we have to be still in our spirit, soul, and body. And we have to learn to think about it and let the Lord arrest us and help us. Because there's too many days that go by that we don't think about eternity the way we ought to be thinking about eternity. Rejoicing in our eternity, but... Weeping because of other people's eternity. And this is the greatest need in our life. To be still with the Lord. Father, help us. Help us. This is a reality today. And there's people around us who are definitely in this reality that are going out into eternity every day. 57 or more million people since last year at this time. And Father, help us. It has to get in us. It has to get deep in us. It's more than a knowledge. It's more than a, it's a, it's a burden, a burden that you place upon us for the lost souls of men, the burden that you carried all the way to the cross a burden you gave to the disciples as you left and ascended back up into heaven. 
a burden that you empowered them to carry out as you sent your Holy Spirit into the world on the day of Pentecost. Help us to respond like you desire for us to, Lord. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Heads bowed, eyes closed, altars are open. Maybe you're here today. You say, Brother Justin, I'm not 100% sure if I die today that I'm on my way to heaven. I'm concerned that I might be on, this place, on my way to this place called hell, this place of torment. But I want to know, I want to know Christ today. And you say, no one's looking around. I'm going to raise my hand, and I'm concerned about that right now. Would you pray for me? Anybody like that today? Say, I'm concerned. I might be on my way to this place of torment, and I want to know that I'm on my way to hell. I'm on my way, to, not to hell, but the way to heaven today. Anybody like that today? You'd raise your hand and say, that's me. I am concerned today. Well, I want to embarrass you. We want to help you. I want to pray for you. I hope you're not here today and you're embarrassed what other people would think if you, if you talked about Jesus Christ and not knowing Him and praying and receiving Him today and believing on Him. Look, you're going to be more embarrassed and more everything in eternity. It's not, a, it's not a game we play. It's a person we know. And if you don't know that person of Jesus Christ, then you don't have eternal life. Don't play with eternity. It's not to be played with. Maybe you're saved today and you say... I'm not thinking about eternity in the Lord's ruling presence. I'll tell you, it makes all the difference in the world. Do you believe there's a place of torment called hell? Who do you know that's on their way to hell today? You know it. There's no question about it. You know they are. They've rejected Christ. They've rejected His Word. Would you pray for them? Who have you helped recently to escape this place of torment? That's a loaded question. Somebody needs your help. I'll never meet them to tell them. You have to tell them. I'll never meet them. Somebody needs my help that you'll never meet, that I'll meet. Are you available? Be still and let the Lord speak to you and have His way in your heart. Be still and listen to Him and want what He wants and do what He wants you to do. But you got to be what He wants you to be first. And be still. Be with Him. And you're going to learn this today and you'll learn this tomorrow. You'll learn this the next day. It's not just a one-time thing. As you read through the Bible and you read about hell and you think about hell, it should stir your heart. Maybe you hear today and you say, Brother Justin, I've been saved, but I've never followed him in believer's baptism since I've been saved. We'd love to help you with that. We'd love to tell you what that means, encourage you that way, to be obedient to the Lord. Just talk with us about it. We'll help you with it. Maybe you're here today and you say, Brother Justin, I'm saved and I've been baptized since I've been saved, but I don't have a church home. I'm looking for one. And this is where the Lord put in my heart, be a member here, put my life and influence here at Grace Baptist Church. We'd love to pray with you about that and tell you what that means. We just want the Lord's will to be done in your life today. I want you to say yes to the Lord. What has He spoken to you about? Whatever He's spoken to you about, that's what you say yes to Him about right now. Maybe it's about somebody else. Maybe it's about yourself. Would you let the Lord help you? Father, please seal these things in our hearts. Maybe, maybe... We're too lax, Lord, about this place of torment. And we're too lax about the lost people that are around us. That we've got to have an overwhelming burden to seek and to save those which are lost by telling them about you. Maybe it's somebody that you put on our heart today that we're praying about, we're praying for, that they'd come to know you. Lord, would you put somebody in their path, if it's not us, somebody, 
that can give them the gospel, then you'd prepare their hearts. We know you're working. We know you're speaking to people in their hearts and their lives. The Holy Spirit is about sin and righteousness and judgment. And so, Lord, we just ask that you'd meet the needs of these that we're praying for that are lost on their way to hell because they're without, without you, Lord. Whatever it is, seal these things in our hearts today. I pray we'll be still with you even, even this afternoon and thinking about these things. And you'd help us as we move forward. Please bless our fellowship time and the food we're going to have here in just a little bit. But help us to be still in the middle of all of it. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Until we meet again, take time to know the Lord and to make Him known. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. God bless.